Sorry about that. Hey guys, welcome to the Sim Racing Paddock. I'm William Marsh, and yeah, I think you can see something might be a little off. Uh, basically, I'm nursing a little bit of a hangover right now. Uh, last night got a little, little bit crazy, and I, I had a few Long Island iced teas, and yeah. <laughs> Uh, fortunately I was, or basically it was just at my house or like in my roommate's place and yeah, we, uh, so I didn't drive or anything. I made sure I was safe, but I had a couple ideas, uh, when I was basically entirely drunk. One of them was a lot of people have been asking me about my favorite car or cars. So why not do a stream? talking about some of my favorite cars. Fortunately, some of them are in Assetto Corsa, some of them are in other titles. So first off, let's start off with Assetto Corsa. And I think you could tell from the image is the Ferrari F40. This was one of my favorite cars growing up. I had a model of it. I think I had a poster of it in my bedroom wall. So I wanted to start off with this car. So let's go Let's see, Italian car, uh, let's see, good Italian track, hold on, let's go to Imola, Imola is one of my favorite racetracks, not going to do a race, we'll just do practice, but yeah, it's kind of funny because back when I did like my time at Inside Sim Racing, I was always raving about Imola to Darren. And I remember, I think, uh, I was excited because Automobilista was getting Imola. And Darren would poke fun at me because I talked about Imola so much. I suck at the track, though. I suck at the track, but it's one of my favorites. Some of those corner combinations are incredible. Hold on, let me just adjust the mic real quick. Oh, my settings are wrong. Are, wait, no, they're not wrong. Hold on a sec. Let me figure something out. That's good, that's good. Should play. So, hold on a second. There it goes. So... Uh, another video I recommend is if you ever watch uh, Doug DeMuro's videos on YouTube, he did a great video talking about the Ferrari F40, talking about all the quirks and features. And one interesting thing is on the rear side, on the wing, on the passenger side, it has the Ferrari F40 logo. On the driver's side, it doesn't. So it's only on one side. Let me try something. So on the driver's side, no. On the passenger side, you see the F40. It's nice to see that touch modeled in uh, Seto Corsa. And it's interesting because also they talked about the differences between the, or Doug talked about the differences between the American and European spec. So you can tell this is clearly the European spec because the American spec, it would have the, um, a bar, or like a safety bar on the bumper. So it's on the front bumper, on the rear bumper. This car doesn't have it, so you can tell it is the European spec. Also, fun fact, two, uh, or it has two gas caps. So you can fill in both sides, two bladders. Fortunately, or unfortunately, I only have one. <laughs> But yeah, another interesting touch, you can't really see it, but when you look in VR, you can see the key hole, but it's funny. You don't have the key modeled in a set of Corsa. Interesting. But another fun fact, uh, you can't see it on this either, but looking at the gear shift, uh, the transmission for the Ferrari F40 is a dog leg five speed which means first gear in real life is left and down. It's not left and up like most other cars. 
So, fun fact, my first car, the 1971 Datsun 510, had that same transmission. Uh, not the exact same transmission, but the same pattern. So, I can say my first car had the same transmission pattern as a Ferrari F40. That was one of the only cool things about it, though. But I did change the mapping of the shifter in Assetto Corsa to match this car, because I wanted to go for that bit of realism. But this is such a fun car to drive. It re You really get that feel of the old 80s tires as well. You get that slip angle. But nice, like one of the great things is that there are no assists. Your ABS is your right foot. Your traction control is also your right foot. There's, I don't think there's power steering in this by default. Let me check something. So, you have to be very careful, but the feel of driving this car is so rewarding. Rachid, uh, if you haven't already, try GTR 2. Uh, try some of the classic sim games. Those are so much fun. I'm planning on doing sort of a retro look at some of them. But those are very rewarding games. And GTR 2, great driving school in it too. Oh, you own every racing game apart from that one. Okay, never mind. The best kind of traction control, but the one that will quickly bite you in the butt if you make a mistake. But yeah, also one thing worth noting is I was talking to you in one of my previous streams about hooking up a shifter mount. I have one now, so I'm using the TH8 RS shifter. So, oh well, yeah, being able to shift properly is so rewarding and being able to adjust the shifter to basically right where I want it. And I'm heel and toeing with these Houston Bell pedals. I adjust them a little more to my liking. But yeah, this car is so much fun. And it's interesting because this was sort of the last of the era for these kinds of, uh, not practical, but I'd say the non-assisted, uh, are the non-assisted sort of, uh, intimate driving feel Ferraris because afterwards, I think they started putting out more assists things like that and also started making them more luxurious in a way because sure like uh, Ferrari's always had the luxury uh, but yeah they've had the luxury but like uh, at the same time they they're like high-end cars became more luxurious and stuff so this was sort of like that last of the uh function over form like mindset whoops but yeah i mean still last to drive as i cut that corner ferrari's all got that snap over steve so uh i did hear about that handbrake uh sparko mod uh, shifter combo it's interesting I think it's good I think it might be overpriced for what it is but yeah I'm gonna talk to them see if I can get to review because I'd love to be proven wrong I'd love for it to be a great shifter because honestly just being totally upfront with you 
I do not like the sequential shifting on the Thrustmaster TH8RS, and I don't like the sequential shifter of the Fnatic Club Sport shifter. Both of them just have, it doesn't feel right. So if they have this dedicated sequential shifter and it feels good, then I might be excited. And if it can double as a handbrake, that would be great. But yeah, I agree. Thrustmaster should be working on pedals. That is their main weak spot. The TH8 RS is a good shifter, uh, but the pedals are mediocre. Lumos, I don't really see any incentive to upgrade from one gear drive wheel to another gear drive. Uh, I'd say save your money, go for a T300 RS or something like that, or TX or something like that. That's my thought. So I want to talk a little bit about the handling of this car because it's a kind of unique beast nowadays. But uh, so, hey, Jake. So this car has a twin turbo V8 engine that produces, I want to say it's like 470 horsepower. And these turbos have a lot of lag. So you can see the orange bar on the uh, bottom right, or no, bottom left, sorry. So on the bottom left, you see the speedometer and that orange bar. That's the turbo. So when I get to this next corner, I'm going to floor it as I go off track. Also note that this can have some understeer. Oh no. Robert, fun fact, if this is who I think it is, that is my brother-in-law. And when I went outside, uh, I thought he was still asleep. So hey Robert, how's it going? If you want, you can come into the garage and say hi. But yeah, so this twin turbo V8 has the lag, but it's not uncontrollable. I think, uh, I think it's just the right amount of turbo lag. But I think that the twin turbo setup might negate some of that turbo lag that was in other cars. Todd, uh, I'm gonna do a live stream in a little bit of uh, next car game wreckfest. I think that could be fun. Hey, Buzzin' Hornet, how's it going? But yeah, this car is a good one. The brakes, they do feel pretty old. Uh, oh, different Robert. Okay, sorry, I got confused real quick. <laughs> but yeah, my brother-in-law's name is Robert, and he's visiting uh, because right now because uh, my dad got married yesterday. And Jake, this is the Ferrari F40. I might do ATS because I bought it at Target. Uh, they actually had a physical copy. Gasp. So I did get it recently. So let's try actually doing a good lap around the track here. But you can see, Tennessee to oversteer. Have I ever driven the 917 or 917-30? Yeah, it's a fun car, but... Uh, it's not my favorite. Hey, Norman, how's it going? Left foot brake for that corner. 
This is a challenging car. Hey, Kev. I should have stayed in second there, but that's an awkward corner because I it feels almost too slow for second gear. But I... Uh, but first gear feels like it's too high on the rev range. Uh, Jake, that could be interesting. Uh, make sure to provide a link, though. Uh, put a link in the description so uh, people could subscribe to me, please, and thank you. And dang it, that corner feels so weird in this car. It's one of my favorite corners in a lot of the cars, but for some reason it's just tough to get a handle on it. Now we have sand on the tires, so we'll do one more attempt at a good lap. Whoa! That turbo, though. Okay, let's get this dust off the tires. Dang it. Awkward. So guys, if you're noticing me driving a little more erratically and my voice a little different, I am kind of nursing a hangover right now. Uh, Norman, yes, I am getting acclimated to the rig. I added in a shifter mount. Uh, Rachid, I think you were asking how I did it. I bought a beam of 8020 and just secured it onto the side. It, it was a little on the pricier side, it was like 40 bucks, but it works really well. I might buy a piece of metal as well to try to put together a uh, handbrake mount too. That's going to be a little more tricky though, I think. But yeah, you have to be careful driving this car. It can be a challenge. Also, later, I do want to get maybe a second camera, maybe even a third, so I can do different angles. Uh, I know Jimmy Broadbent, he does his uh, pedal cam with the same cockpit, so I might try something similar there. Hi, Block Crafter. How are you doing? So this is where we spun last lap. Let's be careful. There we go. You can see where the wheel hopped. Uh, Racing Cube. What is that? Uh, can you refresh my memory on it? I've heard of it, but I can't really remember what it actually does. So, uh, LCD display. I was just sent uh, the Renovatio uh, SRD9, uh, or I think the 9C it's called. So, I'm going to be reviewing that. Just need to figure out a way to mount it. So, Robert, I think part of it is you have to check a setting, which is low latency mode, or at least on Twitch you need to do that, but also there is, uh, basically, I use a program called Restream.io, and that allows me to simultaneously stream between YouTube and uh are between YouTube and Twitch. So I'm simultaneously streaming on both platforms. And then I also am uh, using the Restream chat application, which that is the chat that combines both of them. I believe Mickey, he is using the YouTube chat uh, and he's casting that window into his stream. I'm not certain though, but that brings a little more of a delay. 
Oh yeah, that's the racing cube, the cheaper motion rig. Uh, so that I'm interested in hearing about. Leonard, remember this is a car from the eighties, a block crafter. Uh, nice. Thank you for subscribing. But remember, this is a car from the 80s. I don't think it had the advanced brakes that uh, modern day Ferraris have. Remember, brakes have had huge advances in technology. And also remember, the Ferrari F40 is a road car. So it used 80s road car brakes. So this Sh Mickey and Sean still around 15 to 20 second delay between broadcast and chat. On Twitch, it's five seconds. Okay. Awesome, Jake. Thank you for that. Also, if people watch on Twitch, you can also re-host streams. So that is nice. So you can sort of like repub uh, a republish or things like that so that's pretty cool on twitch oh this car when it's dialed in oh it feels so good so I'll go to another car uh, in, after this lap I'm going to try this in first gear, though. Yeah, that's definitely a second gear corner. That's, that's a bit of a challenge, in my opinion. curb a bit there I am going to be driving a Porsche later on this so uh, thank you uh, Hobel ECWM uh, Norman I have been talking with a couple companies about the possibility of D-Box uh, so it's kind of interesting though because uh, basically Neville Slade, the founder of Visaro, has basically been talking to me for almost a year now. Uh, he he keeps on saying that I am really going to uh, that he wants to send me a Visaro ring, and he also mentioned. Uh, one of the last times we talked, he wanted to send me a rig that has D-Box set up on it. So, I've, I'm cautiously optimistic about that, to be honest. Because he's been talking about that since May. If he's going to follow through with it, that would be awesome. But, yeah, it's been a year since he first shared his idea. Thanks, Robert. Uh, also, sometimes I like trolling Gamer Muscle. I sometimes drop into Jimmy Broadbent streams, but man, like he's blown up big time because I've been friends with Jimmy for about uh, maybe like five years now, I think, or something like that. Uh, way like before he even really was doing much on YouTube, and seeing him go from about uh, go, I, I want to say it was like a thousand, two thousand subs to over 50,000 subscribers, actually no, it's over 60,000 subscribers now I mean that's awesome to see him uh, growing like that he has a bit of an acquired taste though uh, that some people might not like but for people who like the high energy streams things like that uh, check him out so, Block Crafter, 
For streaming, you need... All right, it's not really dependent on your download speed. It's dependent on your upload. So, is, I'd say if you are getting about... Uh, or right now, my connection is saying I'm using 4.4 .4, uh, uh, megabit up. That's how much I'm being used to stream. And with that, uh, you have... Uh, you need to have at least that. Take into consideration that other applications will take up some of your upload speed that you're getting. So I get about 12 megabit per second up. That's roughly what I get. And then, uh, so I'm using four, like, I'm, yeah, it's like four to five megabits per second upload speed. So that leaves the rest of my family with eight, roughly. So take that into consideration. So next favorite car, I'm gonna to go to one of my favorite race cars, and that's the Classic Team Lotus 72. This, in my opinion, is one of the most beautiful like race cars. Let's actually, let's go in the showroom real quick. So, how do we go showroom? Here we go. And, yeah, let's just go into the showroom. I've never, I don't really use the showroom too much in Assetto Corsa, but this car is amazing. And we're talking about favorite cars, so why not just dive in? Hold on. What's going on here? One sec. I need to pull you. Come on. Work here. Sorry, I just. Apparently, this uses a different application. Yeah, different EXE for the showroom. Fun fact. Now we know. Yeah. All right, Norman, I've seen it go over a thousand and. I would love to just like uh, chat and drop in, but the problem is that the chat just goes by so fast. So I understand why you can't respond to chats. There's just not many people watching, but yeah, this car is incredible. So this was the Lotus like uh, Emerson Fittipaldi. So zoom in. Beautiful modeling too on it. Where's the, where's the gas tank on it? But yeah, just look at that line. Oh, if I could get a modern poster of, if I could get a poster of this, I would hang it up in my bedroom right now. Just stunning lines. And then let's get in the car too. The cinematic getting in the car. I mean, just look at it. The seat. You're sitting right on... It looks like you're sitting on the fuel tank. So literally, you have that gas tank right in front of your crotch. That would be freaky. Or all on both sides of you. Oh, that's a fire extinguisher. Never mind. So that's likely the big red fire extinguisher the steering wheel shifter nothing frivolous no buttons on the steering wheel it, there's only the starter yeah this is intense that's not a sequential shifter that's an h shifter rachid that is an h pattern shifter so now let's get behind the wheel guys let's see how this goes hold on a second so, we need to turn on display capture again and then capture any full screen application. That should work. And we'll take this around Laguna Seca because Laguna Seca is pretty well known for having a classic car culture. Uh, that is where I think it's the Pebble Beach concourses 
next to it. Uh, Norman, look at the first line on the description. So, Norman, uh, help get us an open sim wheel. If you go to www.streamlabs.com slash sim racing paddock, that is the easiest way for you to donate towards it. Uh, and then you'll get a pop-up on the screen, which is nice. But fuel tank on both sides. <laughs> so, oh wait, shoot. I have to remap the shifter. Sorry, guys. Slight delay. Hold on. Sorry, guys. I forgot because we have the shifter mapped. Yeah, Monterey Historics also like amazing uh there's also another historic event at sonoma raceway which i've been to a couple times and it's amazing uh seeing some of those classic cars i saw i think it was like a lotus uh, uh lotus 25 or something like that it was one of the older classic lotus cars and then also one of the things i loved to do there uh the last time I went, they had an autocross there uh, where you could drop in for free and drive a, a Jaguar. So I got to drive a Jaguar F-Type at Sonoma, which was a blast. Except it was a small autocross course. It wasn't anything big, but it was nice. Uh, Mr. Block Crafter, I am using the Fnatic Club Sport wheel with the Xbox One Universal Hub and the Forza Motorsport rim. I know, go figure, I'm uh, using uh, Forza rim to play a set of Corsa. But that's what I was sent to review. I've considered getting a smaller steering wheel or buying one off Fnatic because they seem reasonably priced. And those could be even good options for OSWs, I believe, where you could get a cheap rim. Uh, a cheap rim for about, say, uh, $100, I think. And use it on an OSW. So, uh, Nikosi, I actually did something like that I think the first month in Sim Racing Paddock, where I did an F1 through the years video uh, using iRacing because iRacing had sent me the uh, Monza track to test out. So I tested out Monza and I did the different F1 cars that were currently on the service there. Granted, they didn't have the McLaren back then, but I did. It was like the Lotus 49, Lotus 79, uh, and the uh, Williams FW31. Hey, DJ Phil, how's it going? Hmm. Yeah, Archie, that's, that's a little tricky. I don't know how to solder myself. Maybe if you can actually find a friend of yours who knows how to solder. Okay, DJ. That's nice. But yeah, I want to get an OSW so bad. <laughs> I, I was talking with uh, Tomo of Sim Racing Bay, and he said that he might try to work out a deal with me, but units are going to be delayed like a month maybe two months because they're waiting on supply of the motor because apparently it's so popular the motor is getting back ordered go figure But yeah, this is one of my favorite classic F1 cars of all time, because... Oh! A <laughs> little too hard there. Everyone buying mids, yep. 
Hold on. I'm going to turn off the force feedback a bit. Yeah, thanks, Norman. Uh, so, if you if you guys go and want me to review an open sim wheel, it is. Or you can go to www.streamlabs.com/simracingpaddock. And Bob, this is uh, Laguna Seca. So this is in Monterey, California. Fun fact, it was one of the first capitals of the state of California. And it's about three hours from where I live. So I've driven here a few times. Uh, I've actually never seen a race at Laguna Seca though, unfortunately. I have been to a couple music festivals that were hosted here, but yeah, the racetrack is so much fun. and. It was kind of sad. It was in danger of shutting down because, uh, yeah, I was in danger of shutting down because of noise complaints. So similar to what happened with Spa, but thankfully it's still around, still hosts some great racing. The corkscrew though, this is nuts. I did in a previous live stream driving this in VR and it was like oh you feel your stomach turn a bit Norman I do not know why your super chat would be grayed out uh, I'm not sure if you need to have a payment method to do it can anyone else in the uh, stream tell me if it's grayed out or not you don't have to super chat but tell me if it's grayed out for you i don't know if it's an isolated thing or what uh let me check something yeah i'm not Okay, so it's only great out for Norman. Thanks for that. So, guys, uh, you were asking me about uh, Mickey and uh, team, or Mickey and Sean having chat latency. Uh, I'm noticing that there is. Um, uh, so there's normal latency, uh, low latency, and then new ultra low latency. So apparently I could make it even with the chat a little more instantaneous, I guess. But this works well for me. Uh, whoa, little lock up there. But yeah, this car is just so much fun. But yeah, uh, some countries, they don't allow you to do super chat. So that could be something. So after this, I'll do one hot lap. I'll try pushing all out. And then we can see about next car. Little lock up there. So I want to talk a little bit about how this is handling. For a mid-engine car, it's very neutral handling. It allows me to put it 
almost right where I want it. I'm not feeling much in the way of oversteer or understeer, unless I'm really handle manhandling this car. I'm going to watch the Daytona race later. You're the second person who asked about that. Next car should be from R Factor 2. I'm trying to think. There are a couple cars from R Factor 2 that I truly do enjoy. Okay. Thank you, Rachi. Thank you. Guess the super chat button worked for him. Well, wide. I'm enjoying Assetto Corsa more in VR at the moment. To be perfectly honest, I haven't driven Project Cars 2 in like two months, I think. Or maybe a month or something like that. I have not driven Project Cars 2 recently. I know they've been getting a few more updates, which is nice. So I'll, I'll have to take another look at it. I also, I've been getting your comments, guys. I'm going to take another look at... Uh, I'm going to take another look at Gran Turismo Sports shortly. I have my TGT set up on my GT Omega cockpit, so that should be good for me. Favorite car for you in the set of courses, the Porsche 718. Nice. So, actually, for the next car, I'm going to go into Automobilista. So, not my best lap, but I'll take it. Hold on. So, we're going to go into Automobilista. I'm going to swap out for a formula rim. Ugh. Man, that got sturdy in there. Let's wipe off the grips. Boom. Formula rim. PC2 should get another update soon. Soon. The word that sim racers loathe. So. Let's change the top left text. There we go. So this is one of my favorite open wheel cars of all time that we're going to be pulling up. So let's go to Automobilista. Excuse me. Just have to wait for it to boot up now. Yeah, Seto Corsa, the AI has its moments if you pick the right cars. But if you pick the wrong ones... So I'm guessing this is not going to be much of a surprise for people who know me. Or Empty Box, I should say. Uh, Cart Factor Extreme. Or Cart Extreme, it's called in here. This was an original mod for R Factor 1. And then they... Re or someone ported it over to... Uh, Automobilista and made improvements, so it's pretty awesome. Uh, I don't know if there's been an update to it recently to add turbo support, but yeah, so I really like uh, this. Uh, basically, I grew up playing Andretti Racing, and the uh, uh, Andret or the Newman Haas Michael Andretti's car that was one of my favorites, and it was funny, though, because growing up in California, 
there isn't really any Haviland or Haviland stations around. So I was like, why don't we have those? Because of this car. <laughs> so let's see real quick. Um, let's take it to Long Beach because I think I have that. Maybe, or not Long Beach. Or yeah, Long Beach. I could have sworn I had it. Or it might have been in an old install, but that's unfortunate. So let's take it to Red Bull Ring. We'll do that instead. <laughs> this car is such a challenge. I'll state that on the record. It's a challenge. So we'll need to map it, I think. We'll make sure all the controls are mapped properly. But hold on a second, I noticed something weird. Or is that the display off? Hold on, sorry guys. Let's fix this real quick. Wait, why is that so much larger? I guess the screen was a little off. Sorry, guys. Well, hopefully that works with some borders. Display. Nope, I can't look at it. Okay, so throttle. Brake. Steer left. Steer right. Shift up. Shift down. So it mixed up my shifters, I guess. Clutch. That's good. Um, ignition and starter. Pit speed limiter. Should be good to go. So we have assists on, I guess. I do have Laguna, but we just drove Laguna. Hold on. Why was that acting up? Seat sensitivity. So, hold on. There we go. Aw, oh, dang it. I thought I changed the shifting. I find it crazy how the ISI motor, it goes up to ninth gear. That's just crazy. No, hold on. We were having this glitch before. Oh, I know what the issue is with the steering wheel. So let's go to display. Oh, wait, is that it? No. Okay, hold on a second. I, I've sorted it out, I think. Just one minute. Car. So 360 degrees, that should be fine. Yeah, okay, there we go. But Card Extreme is awesome. I would love to see this version ported over to R Factor 2 because they have their own version of Cart Factor. It looks good. But hold on, yeah, you can hear me, okay. But the issue is, this is so much Watch out. improved now. You didn't see anything. So let's do a few laps around. Oh, that downshift sound is incredible. 
I love that downshift sound. Hey, Burger, how's it going? And that throttle lift sound. Sounds almost sci-fi-ish. <laughs> yeah! Now that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Such a tricky car to drive. But I'll have to look and see if they've redone this with proper turbo mapping. Because if they did, that would be a blast. Okay, Norman. Well, I believe the link in the description accepts all nations, I think. Basically, if you have a PayPal, it works. So, one. Ah! I keep on spinning at that corner. Oh, check out that grid girl. Okay, let's get one good lap, guys. I want one good lap. One good lap, please. Excuse me. But I like the new UI for uh, this. It works well. I don't know why I have that uh, camera display adjustment thing there. I guess that's something I can switch out later. Least favorite car, smart car. Or anything with a name that says smart. Uh, or something like that, or implications. Uh, one card that was ugh, was a the Scion IQ. That car is but ugly in my opinion, and it's trying to be a parody, or not parody, but inspired by the smart car. And it's like it's ugh, I can't stomach it. And the IQ took a bad car and, then, in my opinion, made it worse. Especially because Toyota, they're trying to distance themselves from that idea of boring cars. And then the Scion IQ. I'm glad they didn't bring the IQ with them to Toyota when they closed Scion. Flag is okay, out. rant over. <laughs> well, yeah, that's my least favorite car. Hold on. That sound. Okay, how do we... Here we go. Let's rewind a bit.
That sounds incredible, guys. <laughs> Gotta admit, for this running on a 12-year-old game engine, it looks pretty good, guys. This looks pretty good. <laughs> Grin, I think I'm running it in a lower resolution than it should be, but yeah. Woo. Looks and sounds pretty darn good. I'm excited to see what Rise of Studios is going to be doing in the near future. And hey, Fanny, how's it going? Or Fanny. How you pronounce your name? So, Scion is a subsidiary of Toyota. And Scion was essentially an experiment to try to appeal to younger people. And it kind of worked. Okay, funny. My, my bad. But, yeah. So, they decided... They were going to take the cars that worked, make them Toyotas. So, like, the uh, the Scion FRS became, I think it's the Toyota 86, which that's, I think, also what it was in Europe and Japan. So, yeah. And then they took some of the cars that didn't work, like the IQ, I think, and they... I, let me check something real quick. Am I running a lower resolution or something? I guess it's... Okay, display. Nope, it's not showing me. Okay. Yeah, funny. Uh, that car is just a little tricky for me. I don't really have a full grasp on it yet. So let's see, next. Uh, let's fire up R Factor 2. There's a couple cars I like in there. Yeah, I didn't want to check the external launcher. Downloading workshop items. This is a new screen. Oh yeah, they just updated the Marusha. So I have to change the top left text again or else you guys are going to nag me on it. There we go. So let's make sure we got everything set up properly. Oh, more things downloading. Oh yeah, Nissan GT500. That is one of my favorite Japanese cars. Almost done. So yeah, they're updating a lot of the new first party content uh, to add support for the rain and stuff, which is nice. So why not test out the rain a bit? Okay, GT86. Yeah, I think that's what it's called uh, with Toyota now. Okay, so I think I was driving this in VR last, so I need to change that. Yep, so disable VR. 1920 by 1080. 60 hertz. There we go. That should be good. So if you guys want to know what settings I'm running for display, you can just pause on that screen that I just went through. Excuse me. Firing up R Factor 2. I want to test it in the rain, though. I want to do some rain testing. 
come on. So let's see. Whoops. Funny, I am using the Fnatic Club Sport Wheel uh, V2.5. And I have that paired with the Husingveld Engineering Sim Pedals Pro. So let's go to its Nissan. The GT500. Yes, please. And thank you. And for good measure, we will take it to uh, not Suzuka, which is called Matsusaka here. And let's set it to the rain. Yeah, rain. There we go. 79 degrees in rain. Okay. So, uh, here's a good question for the chat. What is your favorite car? I've been sharing some of my favorites. What are your favorite cars? Maybe to drive or just to look at and watch. But what is your favorite car? Let us know. So that's good topic topic of discussion for you while driving. Let me adjust the screen a bit. There we go. Watch me adjust it on this. There it goes. Just had to load. That's one of the frustrating things with our factor two. Loading screens take forever. Uh, I'd say both game and or real life. Toyota GT86. So Michael, uh, or wait, no, McCulloch. Or McCulloch? McCulloch? So I, uh, my friend totaled a GT86. He uh, was driving downhill and his brakes failed. And yeah, he drove through a fence going about 50. Thankfully, he, him and the passenger were, uh, they were unharmed. But yeah, he totaled the car. Scary stuff. Because uh, it was a small party at my house and we were... Uh, basically hanging out, he decided to take uh, one of the girls from my class on a drive. And then we get a call. And he like uh, he's like, All right, actually, it was the girl from the class. And we were, she was like, we're okay, but we crashed. And I'm like, oh, no. Like, I, that's when that happens your mind immediately goes to the worst. And thankfully, they weren't hurt at all. I mean, they were a little sore because they went through a fence at freaking uh, 50 miles an hour, but they were unhurt, which was like a miracle in my opinion. Okay, so let's see how this goes. Dang it, I have to remap, sorry. Slight delay. That's a downside between just so many different things going on. Ah, there we go. St All right. Thank you, uh, Ro uh, Rog Joe. Thank you, Rog Joe. So, clutch. There we go. Up, down. Speed limiter. We don't have to worry about gears. Ignition. Starter. We have to worry about headlights, though. What's the crake? Uh, C-R-A-I-C. Yeah, headlights. Uh, let me set those. Headlights. There we go. Hold on. 
I have to adjust the settings. Force feedback is inverted. Okay, let's... Or is it? Let me just see. Yeah, thanks, Lorenzo. I'm doing my part to help. Ugh. Headlights are invert our force feedbacks inverted. Okay. If anyone from Studio 397 is watching, you need a button to invert the force feedback. Because this will only go down to zero, I think. Nope. That sucks. It said as crack. <laughs> Okay, there could be some funny jokes there. So, hold on. Let me think of what to do here. Detect. That likely didn't work. Nope. Fudge. So, I'm sorry guys, I had to drop out real quick. Hold on. Throttle. Brake. Up. I should not have done that. But yeah, this is frustrating. So uh, it'll just be a few minutes, I guess. But I know they're working on rehamp or revamping the uh, uh, revamping the uh, UI. Please bring it soon. This is so frustrating. Excuse me. Wipers. Yes. So, save. Sad times with Sim Racing Paddock. Sad face. Hold on. Uh, CSW HE pedals T500. Okay, so let me just drop out and invert the force feedback, I guess. That's, that stinks. So I'll just show you how to fix it. So you go into your file manager. So here is the Steam. All right, so local disk. All right, go to your Steam install and Steam apps, common. R Factor 2, uh, it's, I believe, under Core? Yeah. So, or is it Core? No, it's not anymore. They changed it around. User data, here it is. So, you can go, I think it's config, or no, controller. Controller, and it, go to the configuration. So, I just made uh, CSW HE pedals. You open with and just do notepad. Notepad can open JSON files or JSON files, however you want to call it. So I believe it's under here. So that's interesting. It detected a T500. Okay. I don't even own that one. So force feedback. So look at all these different settings that you miss out on because of all this. So let me check something. Invert. No. Is it reverse? Nope. I'm using the Fnatic. That's what's confusing me right now. Where is it?
I know this is exciting, guys, but we'll find it real quick. Steering effect strength. Okay, thank you. Is it not on this one? Hold on. It's not config. Is it on? Is it in the PLR file? Controller. Let's check something. Could it be negative one? Simple as that. Let's try that. So we just saved it. So let's reboot up R Factor 2. Oh, wait, I found it. Steering effect strength. It was inverted. That was the problem. It was already inverted. So let's try now. So it was already inverted in the file. So I guess Thrustmaster runs inverted. Fanatic doesn't. Okay. Let's check it out. And I just realized why we couldn't like search it. Because it had the quotation mark on the beginning. So you had to do a search... Quotation, okay. So let's try now. Load. <whistles> All right, DJ, you have a good one. Thanks for the help. But yeah, slightly irritating, but we got it working. They better have that in the new UI, though. They better. I'd have an invert force feedback button, because I, or at least the option to invert it in the settings. Okay, so now... supposed to be raining. I like the sounds of this car. I really do. And this has great force feedback once you get it dialed in. Okay, I don't like that head movement. That head movement's a pain, in my opinion. Listen to that sound! Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Exaggerate, yeah, why was that set to negative? Steering rate, do we set for 50? I'll set to 49, see how that works. So that exaggerate, yeah, okay, that that caused some issues, I think. It's supposed to be raining, though. Is it going to rain later on in the session? Well, we're good now. Oh, yeah, that feels a lot better. Or looks a lot better, because... That negative 100 on the exaggerate yaw, yeah, whoa. But yeah, I love, oh, got a little over here on the break there. 
<laughs> funny. I've been excited. But I'm excited to see what happens further in R Factor 2 because this looks pretty good. It's improving, definitely. But, yeah. Uh, it still feels a, or looks a little flat, I think. If they can add a little more dynamic stuff in, uh, it could look incredible, but. In my opinion, this is still one of the best feeling titles. And this track is one of my favorites, too. Uh, Studio 397, they've done a decent job of modeling it. It feels pretty darn close to iRacing, I think. So I think I'll do a couple more cars after this. Ooh, that's slideways. Uh, funny, I have not driven a Seto Corsa on consoles, to be honest. Uh, I think that Project Cars 2 offers more cars and tracks. Uh, Seto Corsa has slightly more accurate tracks, I think. Oh, 3PA. Okay. Well, whoever made this track really did a great job. Let's just put it that way. They did their homework. And I just totally overshot. Oh, I accidentally hit neutral. And we just blew the engine. Whoops! So I blew the engine on accident. So, I accidentally had a button map for neutral. So, you'll see fourth gear down into neutral and then boom. Whoops. But, wow, this, this looks pretty nice. Like, might be a little. I thought I set it to rain. Let's see. So, let's go session settings. Practice. Rain. Rain. Let's try again. But I'm... Wow, I said it to AM. My bad. I thought I said it to PM. That's why it was so dark. Excuse me? Fun fact, I have actually never had a car accident. Uh, whoops. Now I read Robert's message. Okay, Robert, I'll try that for the next car. Ludwig, uh, I'd say you might want to wait for Fanatics 
club sport. Or, or not, the podium base, I think. Still not raining. Okay. That's weird. So let's change that then. So let's break my favorite cars. Whoops. So. Overcast and rain. And let's just set it to 95% chance rain. Add some insurance there. So you're saying 6 to 7 a.m. So let's go 6.30. Middle ground. Uh, Fred, I'm going to watch it after the stream. Podium wheel, my speculation is it's going to be around $1,000 for the base. That's my speculation. There is no confirmed price. But my logical guess would be $1,000. The Club Sport wheel base is $499, $500 US. I think it's not unreasonable for them to, for a direct drive wheel, ask double the price. So that's my logical guess. There, it's raining now. So headlights on, wipers on. Those wiper effects don't look bad, at least. So we'll see how this goes. Okay, nice touch. You actually see the window fogging up a bit and then it goes away. That's kind of cool. Uh, where can you watch Daytona 24 for free? I believe you might be able to do at NBC Sports. Just Google watch Daytona 24 hours and I think you'll be able to find it. This feels good in the rain. The downforce you get planted. Whoa, the reflection there. IMSA website, or I think, yeah, that's IMSA.TV. Hey, AK, how's it going? That oversteer. Gotta be careful on the throttle. Okay, Robert, thanks for the tip. But wow, that rain effect actually looks pretty good. Whoa, lock up! So we'll do one or two more laps, I think, of this car. Look at the rooster tail in the mirror, too. That's nice. I mean, they can improve the effects, which they are doing, thankfully. It's nice seeing R-Factor 2 get sort of a uh, second wind. Because second wind doing a good job bringing it that is one of the things i'm really enjoying
Well, okay. That worked a little better than anticipated. Those curbs are slick. Uh, Ludwig, it's going to be a huge upgrade. You're going to be like, where has this been my whole life? And the nice thing is the club sport wheel, in my opinion, feels almost as smooth as a direct drive wheel. It's just not as powerful, not as quick. But in terms of smoothness, wow. I'm really surprised at the quality of this wheel. One nice, or one nice thing I'm noticing on this car, like uh, the side windows, the uh, drops are actually combining and moving back. So yeah, this is doing pretty good. Also, it's pretty stable with my system. Granted, I have a 1080, so it's like, it better be running well, or else we'd be in a lot of trouble. But yeah, I like the look of this, guys. R Factor 2 is shaping up pretty nicely. So, nice fun fact. So, if you're in a gear and you need to quickly get into neutral, in R Factor 2, you can press both shift up and shift down, and it throws you into neutral. That's a nice touch that's in quite a few uh, cars. So let's look a little bit. Doesn't look too bad. I mean, it does still look like R Factor 2 this way, but if they improve the rain, like the look of the rain, I think this would look really nice, in my opinion. But that skid. I think R Factor 2 is on the right track. So we'll see how it picks up and stuff. So, yeah. Let's go to uh, GT now. GT3. What's my favorite GT3 car? In this. I think it's the McLaren. That's one of my personal favorites. Rain rendering is being redone as we speak. Whoop, whoop. So let's go with the McLaren GT3. But what color? That's the question. I like the look of that. What's B? Yeah, I like this one. And let's go to Silverstone. And I'm going to stick with the rain, I think. Yeah. So. Because I want to see how the rain looks in this. Wow. Look at the reflection on that plate. The cup could interact with the suds a little better though. Or hold on. Wow. Look at this phone. I mean, I wish the fingerprint sensor was a little lower on it, but this is a good, this is a good phone. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> oh, okay. A message from my friend, but yeah. So, kind of go figure. I was reading the article about the new physics calculator for R-Factor 2 earlier. It's nice that they did revamp the physics calculator because it sounds like they are working on improving some things because uh, they said they admitted they made some mistakes with their tire model and they are revamping it. I think they did just improve the Marusha. I... Uh, and that is, it's still a 2012 Formula 1 car. I'd love to see them put in a 2017 car. Even like a 2017 Formula ISI. But, yeah. Because 
The FISI is a good car. It's just woefully outdated now. It's a half decade old now. Almost loaded. I have the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus. So let's turn on the lights. Hey, Dirge, how's it going? Yeah, I'm excited for that. Uh, I wonder, though, because they worked with McLaren for World's Fastest Gamer. So could we see a McLaren F1 car? Because they are really big in the simulator stuff now. But we also have the... Uh, what is it? Yeah, I'm thinking logically it's most likely going to be something from McLaren. But that'll be an interesting comparison because we have the... Uh, we have... The McLaren F1 car in iRacing as well. Oh, that tire squeal. On the throttle. There we go. Whoa! This car is squirrely. Oh yeah, this is my favorite GT3 car that is modern being used. The My favorite GT3 car that was discontinued, much to my anger, was the Z4 GT3. Which I am going to show that later, but in race room, because the sounds. We need the sound. Whoa! Whoops. I think I have invulnerability on. Yeah, invulnerability's on. Just to be safe. Gamer Muscle drinks tea by the gallon in the sim rig. I would pay to see that. I would pay to see Gamer Muscle do that. Oh! Ay ay ay. I would need to turn traction control up or something like this. I didn't break it! It's invulnerable, full house! Triple A Insurance, please do not watch this video. Drinking tea nonstop and eating cookies. Wow, that is understeer galore. So, is hydroplaning modeled now in R Factor 2? All right, where you can see the puddles and uh, hydroplane. But man, it's getting rainy. Settings and race room. Well, I switched from Geico. <laughs> Random thought, the way the lights are glistening off the streak of water on the wipers, that looks pretty good. Where literally you can see the water pulling up as the bottom of the wiper makes a streak. And you can see the light shining off it. Yes, I, uh, Rob, I am in the... Uh, Houston Felt Engineering Sim Rig GT. Come on.
Okay, I am feeling the puddles, actually. So I am feeling the puddles a bit. Oh, whoa, that that's a big puddle. Local hydroplaning is under development. Okay, Robert. Yeah, I can feel it having an effect. Whoa, 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 whoa! Oh, fudge. I just realized I have auto clutch on. My bad. But look, you can see. Whoa! Those puddles are getting intense. They're definitely bigger puddles than when we first started. Look at that. Oh! Okay. Wow. That. That is intense. I'm just driving slow now because I want to just look at these puddles. Wow. Jeez, Fanny. I mean, funny. You're just giving me so much flack today. I drive safe in real life. I've never had a ticket. I have never been in a moving accident. Someone hit my car while I was parked, but I have never been in an accident where I was at fault. But yeah, ay, ay caramba, red flag, red flag, but wow, this is looking pretty good, guys. Bravo to Studio 397 for actually doing effects like that. So now we're going to jump out of our factor two. Uh, I've been enjoying it, but time to grab some other cars. So let's see real quick. Top left text. We are going to be jumping into race room racing experience. Should be fun, I think. So let's go to our race room racing experience and play 64 bit. Yes. <laughs> Sarah Lynn, Lord Sugar. Maybe in a future stream. I want to do maybe like a stream that's like crazy ideas. That could be fun. So let's move that over a little bit. Wait, no, 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 not VR, not VR. Dang it. Made a mistake. I need to turn off the VR flag. So, properties, set launch options, VR off. There we go. Hold on a second. I'll show you the settings in a minute. It's taking a minute to boot.
Well, it doesn't rain much in California. We're in a drought. Although it is raining recently. So settings. 1080p, 59 hertz. Control settings. I need to remap, actually. Excuse me. So that looks all good. That looks good. Force feedback. So I have force feedback inverted off. That should be good. I'm going to turn it down to 80% force feedback. No smoothing. Uh, spring and damper I don't need. Steering force intensity 100. Minimum force 3%. Under steer I have down to 33. Vertical load 10. Lateral 60. Steering rack 100. Slip effect I usually put a little bit on. Curve vibrations I like. Shift effect feels good. Collision effect, I'm going to turn that down to 100. There we go. So, let's give this a try, guys. I <laughs> should try snow sometime. So, let's first go with one of my favorite sim cars that's fictional. The Formula Race Room X17. Just imagine a modern car with a V10. It's insane. So let's go. So we'll do a couple of cars in a race room and then I'm gonna wrap up this stream, I think. So, boom, boom. <laughs> that sound. Yeah. Wait, I have to invert the force feedback. Dang it. Hold on. Force feedback, invert. This is what R Factor 2 needs. Inverted force feedback on. Simple as that. We need that. Please. Thank you. Whoop. And then, boom, it's fixed. Don't have to leave the game. But, oh my god, this is so fast. It wasn't really a wedding, it was a uh, courthouse ceremony. They wanted to save money and they just decided to have courthouse wedding. Uh, it was pretty good. Afterwards, we ended up getting a brunch. So funny, uh, inverted force feedback basically means what it is so some wheels have force feedback motors that run differently so you have to invert it or else when you steer a little bit it's gonna just go all the way so that's essentially the idea
R Factor uh, 2, I don't believe, has a Lotus 98T. I don't believe so. Maybe in a mod, but not first party. I would love to test this out with an OSW. Whoop, whoop. But this is so flipping fast. And I'm not even using DRS, I forgot to map it. tight. Dirge, when I get one, I am going to do that. If you guys want to help donate towards an OSW, uh, another shameless plug alert, uh, go to streamlabs.com slash sim racing paddock and help us get an open sim wheel. Yeah, Dirge, I've been to CXC. That wheel is freaking intense. Alright, because they use a uh, Sim Steering 2 system. And I gotta admit, that thing is glorious. I want to get one good lap with this car. So after this, I'm going to do one more lap. And then I want to do an experiment. I'm going to drive the Indy car around this track. Because that's one of my favorite modern open wheelers um, in real life. I know some people think it's ugly, but I like it. that late apex kind of missed the apex there but we're okay flat out through here scary as heck but oh yeah break missed the chicane a bit Apex, there we go on the throttle, and we are across the line now. 111.855. Dang. I think to compare, IndyCar pole was like 113 or something like that. Uh, so let's try with the IndyCar now. I know two open wheel cars in a row. So, yeah. Uh, Poboli uh, CWM. Uh, basically, they are planning their beta testing around uh, March. And they're going to be going around to various locations 
allowing people to test it out. Basically, what they've been saying is it's going to be about 12 newton meters of torque, or 12 newton meters, sorry. And it is, uh, the load cell brake on it is going to be rated at about 50 kilograms, which is pretty darn good. Uh, but beyond that, there isn't really much. They want me to be one of the first people to test it out, though. They have told me that repeatedly. It's going to be interesting driving this car in comparison. Definitely not as fast. But still pretty darn fun. I really like this... I've liked the DW12. I think the 2018 version, though, is going to be incredible. Little tighter turning radius there. So, Autographed Toaster A, that is a cool screen name. Uh, to compare, this wheel I'm using right now generates about 8 Newton meters of torque. Which is okay. Uh, the Logitech G25, I think, produces 2.5 to 3. So, it's about almost 5 to 6 times stronger than a G25 or G27, G29. Well, a little wide. So it's going to be pretty darn strong. I just use the term Newton meter because uh, Newton meter is the standard go to describing torque in sim racing. So next lap is going to be a hot lap, I am hoping. Time for a hot lap, guys. Yeah, that's what I'm nervous about with the field VR. I'll believe it when I drive it. That's what I've been saying. Dang it! I made a good corner and boom, I screw it up. Fudge. Sorry, guys. We'll get another shot at this lap. I might need to just stay in second for that corner. Because this turbo gives me good low-end torque. At least. Tries in second. Roll on the throttle. RIP cones. That was an intense first corner.
Whoa, whoa. Let's try this in second gear. That was cleaner. So one more lap, guys. One more lap. I'm hooked. Avoid the cones. There we go. tree there that's gonna hurt us on the exit I think make this a wide corner love that apex but we're okay breaking there. R.I.P. Cones, the sequel. 117. Not too shabby. I think 115 or 114 was full, but compared to that F, that fictional F1 car with that V10 with a 111. Jeez. That, that, that fictional F1 car is nuts. So... I think I'm going to do one more car. Hold on. Where's my rim? Here it is. But don't worry. We're going to we're going to make it count. So, practice. Where is it? The Norch life. We'll do the 24 hour circuit. What do you mean redo a test drive in the race room? Actually, no, I'm gonna have to do two cars. Sorry guys, so two cars left. First off, I mentioned it earlier in the stream, the BMW Z4 GT3. Beautiful sounding car. So you're gonna have to live with the sound around the Norch life. Now we wait for the track to load. Okay. Who wants to bet? How far am I going to make it before I wreck? Oh, it's almost 1 a or it's 1 p.m. almost so yeah after this I'm definitely having lunch <laughs> I can feel my stomach growl okay love the sound of this car yeah
Yeah, this is just a brutal sounding engine. I flippin' love it! And the exterior sounds. I believe the M3 CSL also had the V8. That backfire. I like the sound of this over the Chevy small block, in my opinion. This car just feels great. Yeah, this is a great combination. It's a challenge, but it's a lot of fun. But also remember, apparently, you can get all the content in Race Room for like 60 bucks nowadays. So that is a good deal. You get so much content. Hey, Polly, how's it going? Whoa! Careful there. But I am really enjoying this version of the Nordschleife. It feels spot on, which I mean it should, it's laser scanned. I mean, going from the Aceto Corsa version to this feels great. And I know this will be a shock to some of you guys. I have never driven the iRacing Nordschleife. I just, I've never bought the track yet. There are still some tracks I just don't own yet in iRace. Or cars and tracks, I should say. Uh, what did I have for breakfast? A protein bar. I don't know any good desk arms off the top of my head. But for sounds, race room is unmatched. I'm just saying that. Because when you're driving at high speed, listen. You're hearing the wind. Just that depth of immersion and feedback is incredible.
And just this car is a great one. Whoa, I hit that a little hard. Here's a carousel. I'm not a race room fanboy. I enjoy it. I don't drive it that much, though, to be honest. I just, yeah. There are the different parts of Sims that I enjoy, different parts I don't like. I don't like that the physics model in Race Room is at or is not as advanced as an R Factor 2, Assetto Corsa, I Racing. There's no flat spotting in Race Room. There's no dynamic track rubbering in. Uh, you only have day or time of day presets instead of being able to configure the actual time. Uh, there's no night racing, no weather, there's a lot that is missing in race room, but there's still a lot it has going for it. And this combination is one thing it definitely has going for it. So we've made it around, guys. That was a good lap. I had maybe one moment where I was a little nervous, but that was a good, clean lap. Whoa! Whoops. Misjudged a little bit. Uh, Autograph Toaster, I believe the PSP version's available for PS Vita. And that's a lap. That was a nice lap. So I'm going to do one more car, guys. One more car. And then I'm going to wrap up the stream. Because I'm getting hungry. Maybe even hangry. But, yeah, so let's take a look. I am going to go with the Porsche GT3. I believe it's in now. Yes, it is. The Porsche 911 GT3R. My favorite Porsche, in my opinion. Just a nice car. And, excuse me. We'll take it to Mid-Ohio. A great track. Challenging. Tight corners. Yeah, I don't know, funny. Uh, I don't have a Logitech wheel anymore. I mean, I have a Logitech uh, G, or not G, uh, Driving Force Pro that I wanted to do a video looking at later on. But yeah, so last car and track, guys. Hey, C6 Steve, how's it going? Oh, this sound. Woo. 
feel like the seats a lit are like this wheels a little high in this. So I would need to adjust the seat. Hold on. Let me see if I can do that real quick. So control settings, secondary functions, I think. It might actually be primary functions. Is it? Nope. Secondary functions, okay. Okay, let's try this out. Nope, that's not the right button. My bad. But yeah, that... It feels like they might have accidentally made a mistake. Uh, do I know YouTube Jardier? Uh, I am uh, uh, friends with him uh, on Facebook. I talked to him... Time to time, but not too much. He's a nice guy, though. Can we not move the seat up? Can we move forward to back? Adjust seat up. There it is. That's good. We have that. So, seat up, up, up. There we go. Much better. So much better. I love the sound of those downshifts. Um, I'd go uh, Polly with a Ferrari F40 in red. <laughs> This is such a fun track though, in any title. Because blind corners, elevation changes, crests. This first corner, so rewarding when you get it right and I just did not get it right. This has some serious throttle on understeer. There we go. What's amazing, like when you go off track, you can just hear the dirt and the gravel getting thrown up. McLaren SLR, great choice. This car is definitely a beast as well. Ooh, that felt good. That did not feel good.
Yeah, I know some people do prefer Seto Corsa, and I definitely see, like, why. And in most situations, I do prefer a Seto Corsa. But when it comes to the sounds and the feeling that you're in a track that's environment that's alive, because you see people taking pictures of you, you see uh, flags waving and the audience and the crowd, that is a great feeling and this atmosphere that is kind of missing from other titles in my opinion. I mean, it seems like the audience is moving at like 30 frames per second, though. It seems not as smooth as the car and driving, but yeah, it just really has a nice feeling of atmosphere. I'm excited to see what happens with GTR 3. Uh, I really hope we do get a trial or demo this year. So this is my last lap, guys. What am I going to have for lunch? I'm thinking of having a burger. Because I need something substantial. And on the far corner, and across the line. And I'll likely watch Daytona after this too. Daytona and burgers, that sounds good. So guys, these are just some of my favorite cars. Uh, when this goes live, I'd love for you to share this with your friends. I'm gonna make timestamps in the description. Uh, have I tried the semi-truck racing sim? I have raced them in Automobilista, so yes, I have done that. It's fun. Definitely interesting challenge, though. But, yeah, they're fun. Uh, so, I'm interested in maybe doing some goofier streams. Uh, maybe do some American Truck Simulator. Uh, maybe see how close it is to reality in California, because that's where it's situated. Uh, so, I might try that out sometime. And, okay, question. I know it's not a sim, but I've been getting hooked on the game Rocket League. Uh, so, Rocket League. Would you guys like to see me live stream Rocket League? I think it could be a lot of fun. Uh, Ian, this is uh, Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. So, yeah, I, I think it could be fun, kind of diversion of sorts, to do Rocket League. And just have fun with that. So, what are your thoughts? Would you guys be interested in me trying that out? Okay, that's one vote. Yay. Rocket League with a wheel. Uh, that would be dangerous. Well, we accidentally just did another lap. So, guys, I'm going to get some food because I am flipping hungry. So, thank you for watching. And for the Sim Racing Paddock, I'm William Marsh. And you have a great rest of your day. And also, enjoy the Daytona 24-hour race.